Well, greetings, and thank you all very much for attending. Uh, first off, I'd like to recognize everyone who participated in the Mars Society's International Gemini Mars Competition to design uh, uh, inexpensive and practical uh, Mars flyby mission plans. Is there anybody here who entered in that? Awesome. Well, stand up. Let's everyone uh, give them a big hand. <laughs> You know, the Mars Society is the product of its members. And to find so many talented teams working on this is, uh, you know, is really wonderful. It's a testament to the talent that makes this a wonderful organization. So thank you all for your work, and I hope that many of you actually get to go to Mars one day. Um, I'd like to announce some good news for Mars exploration. Uh, and that is the, uh, and my background is a lot of politics and a lot of space policy, so I'm, I'll, uh, you'll, you'll be getting a little taste of both. Uh, but the Senate, um, in their bipartisan 2017 NASA authorization bill, requires NASA to send astronauts to Mars within 25 years. Now here's why this is important, because it's never been done before, we've never had a date. President Kennedy said, in this decade, we will go to the moon and, uh, and bring astronauts safely back. And he made it. When you set a goal, you're more likely to achieve it. Uh, and 25 years is way too long, uh, I think, for all of us in this room. But it's a start. And, uh, and with luck, the next administration will uh, accelerate uh, that. Now, more and more space advocates are familiar uh, with the uh, Mars flyby concept, but many may not be. And we also have many people watching online around the world. This will be on YouTube forever. Uh, so I'll describe this exciting mission and how we can actually get a Mars flyby launched in the very near future. Uh, some of you may have attended my speech on this topic last year. Uh, and the reason I'm back this year is because the president, the next president, does have the opportunity to cancel the asteroid mission and with hardware and, and funds, redirect that to getting us on a uh, true Mars flyby. Uh, and uh, if we as space advocates raise our voices in support, that's more likely to happen. I'll be uh, talking about more of that uh, during this presentation and at some of my other presentations. I got four, uh, three others um, in addition to the debate tonight that I hope you'll attend. Um, the reasons to do a uh, flyby are too numerous to count. Uh, those who have worked on the, uh, the plans, you know them well. Um, but, um, uh, you know, he here's one reason. We could stick with what we're doing now. And that, with, with what NASA is currently proposing, instead of a Mars flyby, instead of returning to the moon to, live, uh, to learn how to live on Mars or going to Mars, um, what's on the books now is a number of ill-defined missions to lunar orbit. EM2 from SLS will go to lunar orbit to test SLS. EM3 will go to lunar orbit. EM4 will probably go to lunar orbit. Then EM5 or 6, according to the current plans, will go to lunar orbit again to, if they're successful in bringing back a piece of an asteroid with the asteroid mission, then they will go out and chip off some pieces of it. Um, we really need to stop hanging around the neighborhood and, um, uh, and to uh, uh, stretch our legs a little bit in our solar system. Uh, you know, these would be nice missions, the EM missions with good science yield and additional uh, reliability testing for spacecraft and habitats, and some may last for many weeks. But after testing SLS on the first and second lunar orbit missions, how many times can you do the same general mission to various lunar orbits or L points, and remotely running rovers uh, on the moon from, from there and still keep the public interest, 
We're going to launch another uh, rocket, and it's going to go where the other one did, and we're going to uh, run a robot there with our little uh, Xbox controller. Goody. Uh, that, that won't necessarily keep the public interest nor Congress's interest. Now, I'm not criticizing NASA's engineers. It is not. Uh, the, it, it, it's the political leadership that killed the return to the moon and the real path onwards to Mars and replaced it after much indecision with what we now know as the asteroid redirect mission uh, or arm. Operating under great political constraints and even effective bans within NASA of using the word moon, I kid you not, I've talked to people, that's a bad, was a bad word. NASA's best engineers and rocket scientists gave us the best possible missions that they were allowed to do. So I, there's many things about the asteroid mission I like. I just don't like doing it instead of things that really will put us on a, uh, a mission to, uh, uh, to Mars. And in some of my other talks this, uh, during this conference, you'll hear more on that. The Mars flyby, however, is, is a game, game changer. This is what will grab the uh, enthusiasm of the American public and make NASA's journey to Mars more than a mere hashtag. In its simplicity, the Mars flyby is a 500 um, to 700 day crewed mission likely with two astronauts, which will make a huge loop around our solar system. The 2021 opportunity has an amazing bonus. Venus, that year, the flyby will first fly by Venus on its way to, uh, uh, to Mars. Buy one, get one free. The next several opportunities, such as 2024, would not have that opportunity. Uh, uh, but they would go to, uh, to Mars, of course, not to land, but to validate the journey, just like Apollo 8 did for the moon landings. Perhaps the most important part of the flyby will, and I just caught a little bit of the previous speaker, it sounded like he was talking about advances in life support, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but developing the life support that'll be used for the journey which is um, if for the 2021, it's almost 600 days, 582 days, I think. Um, and the same of effective life support will be used on the surface of Mars and the moon. Um, now, if we wait until NASA's current plans, at least on paper, there's no funding, no requests, no, nothing specific, to do a Mars flyby. It's going to be, get out your calendars and write this down, 2033. Now, if, if, if we do that, then in uh, the Apollo 8 of, of, of Mars exploration, then that means it's going to be sometime thereafter that we actually land on, on Mars. You're talking mid to late uh, 2030s and in some of uh, NASA's uh, talks are talking about 2040 and so forth. You know, might as well just make it the um, 100th anniversary of uh, Apollo 11, you know, round it off if we're going to wait that long. But, we, but by doing the Mars flyby in 2021, or if we miss that uh, window in 24, then we are grabbing that 2033 mission to 2021, we're, we're yanking a decade off of it, and that's going to drag with it also the, uh, the ability to land a lot earlier on Mars, because it's going to force us to build that life support system. It's going to uh, force us to, uh, to do all the, uh, all the other research we need uh, to, uh, for the journey part. And, uh, you know, and, and that's a good thing. We need big challenges as a nation to unite our country and inspire our youth. Uh, now we will have the rockets and spacecraft ready. Uh, there's just little info on, uh, on the, the next two uh, opportunities. Um, but, uh, uh, and thanks to Congress this year, they put in a requirement to uh, start building 
the habitat. You know, we, we've got SLS, we've got Orion, and there's also SpaceX, and, and now with, um, um, uh, we, we've got the new Glenn from uh, Blue Origin. Uh, so, but we need a habitat that's qualified for 600 days plus. And so that's now actually on the drawing boards. Uh, so um, the flyby, to run you through it, it'll take, it would take off in 2021. Uh, if you do it on an SLS, you can do it all in one, uh, one launch, no need for docking and, and, uh, and, and weights on orbit to link everything up. Um, but it could be done with, uh, with either uh, a Falcon Heavy or a new, um, uh, the, the new Glenn with uh, two, two launches, perhaps. Uh, so the astronauts will take off. Of course, uh, they'll, they'll fly to uh, uh, out where no one has gone before, beyond the, uh, beyond the moon. And this is a view taken by one of our spacecraft of the moon you know, beyond the moon, and that's really kind of cool. I really like seeing that. Um, but uh, uh, as they speed past lunar orbit into space never before seen with human eyes, you know, we'll be riveted to their photos, videos, voices, uh, as, they, uh, as they're on course for the first flyby, which will be Venus. No one's ever been there before. You know, th this is the cool stuff we can be doing in like five years, the stuff that that all of the you know the usual people say, politicians say, and bureaucrats, oh, this is 2030s, 40s, and so forth, and send actual human eyes out there looking at this stuff and uh, and studying it. So as the weeks pass, as they're on en route to Venus, uh, the sun will get larger than you have ever seen it. The orbits of the planets will appear very different. Soon, Venus herself will noticeably grow, and all eyes will be on Venus as our astronauts watch on the flyby from just 6,800 miles away, 11,000 kilometers. We can't enter Venus's orbit, of course, on this first uh, uh, mission to the planet, so Venus speeds by in an exhilarating feast for the eyes, and the views certainly will be out of this world. We might be able to fire off some CubeSats to Venus's orbit while we're there, and certainly conduct a great deal of, of science. As Venus recedes gradually, the sun um, will, shink, will, will shrink, first to Earth-sized view, and then becoming smaller and colder than any human has ever seen, as our attention turns to the red planet, Mars. Now en route, they'll have a habitat, kind of like a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a very micro version of ISS. And, um, uh, and as it approaches v, uh, Mars, then there will be more opportunities to launch CubeSats. Now, you guys in the room, there will be opportunity, take advantage of those opportunities for uh, uh, CubeSats. Maybe you can uh, create proposals and send your work to Venus or Mars. Um, and, uh, but one thing the astronauts will crave when they're 100 million miles and more from Earth is human contact. So uh, when you come to the uh, Mars Society in 2022, uh, you'll probably see them on screen. That's Andy Weir from last uh, year's uh, convention, but you'll probably uh, have uh, uh, two astronauts just eager to uh, to chat with you. Maybe we'll set up a special room, just go in and talk to these guys, and they'll probably be delighted. Um, so the uh, the flyby will come as close to uh, Mars as ISS is to Earth, 217 miles, 350 kilometers, and th this is going to be a real lightning uh, ride. Fasten your seatbelts. All humanity will be watching as one. It's one thing to see photos of Mars from orbiters and rovers, and you know we've all been stunned by the, by the photos we, we get, and even of Pluto and things like that, but it'll be an entirely different perspective. 
to see it from the astronauts' eyes, their thoughts, their emotions, their descriptions, their oh my God moments as they breathlessly recount what they're seeing. And that's some of the inspirational benefits of the flyby. As the, as the spacecraft uh, flies past Mars, uh, we'll have accomplished so many historic firsts. Um, and, and by the way, there's just a little uh, illustration from another thing about how CubeSats to Mars and CubeSats to Venus may be a thing. So get your proposals uh, written and uh, start working on them. Um, but, uh, you know, here's another thing. Gone will be the days of wistfully looking off and counting the anniversaries, 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, years of our great accomplishments. Sure, we'll always do that. Uh, and th that, that's history we'll never lose. But finally, we'll have something to say, wow, here's something new. We'll be uh, setting again new feats and putting the awe back in awesome. So as Mars grows dimmer, by the way, that, that's a comparison of the uh, flyby distances between uh, Venus and Mars. One's a little further out, and one is just skimming it. I, you know, it, 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 it's, it'll be so close, you can uh, reach out and uh, grab a Martian if he uh, sticks his arm out to you. Um, as, um, as Mars grows uh, dimmer, and then Earth grows from a teeny blue marble, uh, back to its full size will await the astronauts return home and many many stories we'll share for years um, but that won't be the end it'll be the beginning the beginning of a serious and focused plan to actually land on explore and colonize Mars in our lifetime trust me right now it won't happen there's nothing on the books it's all hashtag journey to Mars. But beyond EM2 and 3, there's nothing written uh, out on, on NASA's website. There's nothing saying this is exactly what we will be doing. So if it's not out there, we're probably not going to be doing it, or it'll be pushed up years and years. Uh, the asteroid mission has already been pushed up from uh, launching about 2020 to 2023. And that means that it wouldn't get back until 2027, 2028 for, uh, for the asteroid mission. Again, I'll have some more comments on the asteroid mission during my uh, uh, talk on the asteroid mission. I think that's tomorrow or something. Um, and, uh, but, you know, wh what's it all about? You know, once, once they're back, um, it's really all about getting people to Mars so that they have that historic moment as an astronaut takes that historic first step onto the dusty red surface of Mars. Um, the mission truly is an Apollo 8 for, uh, for Mars. The flyby of the moon on Christmas Eve in 1968 paved the safe path for landing on the moon. And the Mars flyby will validate all elements needed for successful voyages to Mars. Even more, it will force the development of all the elements for Mars voyages. Now, not in 10 or 20 years. And that, that's, kind of, that's what uh, folks I've talked to at NASA say. You know, it'll take 10, 20 years to get life support uh, where we need it and so forth. Um, and uh, why let that be an impediment? So that's why it's an imperative that NASA does do the 2021 Mars flyby, um, or if that uh, fails because of the, uh, the tight uh, launch windows 2024. Um, so we have a lot of things already in development. Like I said, uh, we have the SLS, Orion, Falcon and Dragon, New Glenn. These are all in development. Uh, we have the technology and the uh, creativity to go to Mars. Uh, and again, as I said, there's nothing specific on the books uh, beyond uh, SLS EM3 besides talk of journey to Mars. So we need to change that. And perhaps the flyby is the only thing that will really grab the attention of the American people and, uh, and, and grab the flyby from the 2030s, yank it to 2021, 
force NASA to then give us landings on Mars a decade earlier than they might have otherwise. You know, we went from, from absolute scratch in 1961 with Project Mercury we had, uh, when uh, President Kennedy said, we will go in this decade to Mars, to, to, to the moon, and return a man safely, um, it was almost the impossible. We had to invent everything um, in just eight years. By contrast, the flyby is teeny in, uh, in uh, technological, financial, and, and even political terms. Uh, but my gosh, this, this is the one thing that really will inspire people back towards space. Um, I do a lot of radio shows and things like that on the space program, and I hear a lot of, of, of comments from callers and talk show hosts. They'll say, what's NASA doing since they canceled the space program? And I said, well, no, they haven't. Look up, 200 miles up. We have, uh, you know, our, our astronauts on the space station. Uh, we're building the rockets to take Americans back to, uh, to space. Uh, SpaceX and uh, Boeing are, uh, are preparing to, uh, to uh, bring our astronauts back so they don't, um, you know, uh, from, from Russia. And uh, so we're doing all these things, but it doesn't get very much attention boy, the Mars flyby will catch your attention. Um, how am I on time? Thanks. Um, you know, so, uh, so here's, um, here's what can happen from uh, just saying we're, we're going to do the flyby. Kids are going to start screaming, I'm going to Mars, and practice taking footsteps on new worlds. Red sand will become popular for sandboxes. Students will want to be part of the mission and write apps and design components while planning with new eagerness for careers in STEM. Morale at NASA and commercial space will uh, soar, and the public will once again believe that we truly can uh, go to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Mars. Let me just step through a couple of these. This is uh, uh, some uh, life support. Uh, um, and uh, air revitalization, and uh, oh yeah, uh, this is called yesterday's coffee is today's coffee on the space station. That's actually what the astronauts call it. Uh, but we'll we we we, we can get there uh, better. Um, the ISS can play a huge role because. Uh, we, we need to do more closed-loop close loop life support work up there, more long missions. You know, we did the one year in space. Uh, well, we need to, uh, to do perhaps an 18-month uh, and get a little bit more uh, data points. So in conclusion, one way or another, there will be a new direction in space policy in January. Uh, Americans have remained on the so sidelines as China gears up for their race to the moon and Mars. They're in a race, whether we notice or dare admit it. I'll talk about more about uh, China's space program on Saturday uh, and more about the space agenda for the next president tomorrow. But there really is no better opportunity to get our space program back on track and faster uh, than the, uh, uh, the Mars flyby. Be happy to take a few questions. Sure. No, good, good. Um, well, uh, yes, I'm not sure if a non-Mars, a non-Venus one goes still within the, uh, the Venus uh, uh, orbit. I think some of those do. But, um, well, here's the thing. They have very rigorous standards on radiation, too rigorous. You know, number one, they're strapping people into a rocket, and sometimes rockets don't work very well. And, and tragically, we've had three uh, failures ourselves. The Russians have had failures that cost lives. Space is risky. I just tell the astronauts, raise your right hand. Do you accept the risks? I do. Hell yes. Okay, go. 
take the risks. And I think that you will find astronauts lining up to take the risk. Obviously, we'll want to do more work on radiation shielding. One of the most effective uh, radiation shields is not lead. That's kind of uh, hard to, uh, to launch, but water, so you encase uh, at least part of the, uh, uh, the habitat in, in your water tanks you're going to need anyway. Well, I, I think I, uh, most observers will say the asteroid mission will not survive Jan the uh, uh, January 20th. Uh, it's, it's hated in Congress. It's hated in NASA. People I've talked to throughout NASA say, give us something good. Let us, let's get us towards it. Um, I'll be talking a lot more on that in, my other, uh, in, in a couple of my presentations. So I invite you to uh, join me there. I've, I've got lot, lots of facts and, uh, and quotes. Uh, any other questions? Do we have time? One more. One more right there with a hand up. Uh, so Mars has two moons and split it. Um, and so does it fly by when it's really trying to reach out to and maybe uh, stepping on one of the moons? Oh, absolutely. And, and many uh, people are proposing those. But just like with Apollo 8, first, you want to validate you can get there and come back safely. This is going to do it. And, and, and so, uh, uh, you, you know, then perhaps the next mission would, uh, would you know, and entering the orbit of Mars is, is considerably more difficult, and you've got to have lander and things like that, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, are we out of time? Nothing. Hmm? No. Okay, one more uh, question in the back. Who had their hand up first? Fight over it. Arm wrestle. Stand up. Well, well, re re remember what I said, sir. <laughs> Quickly. Well, th 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 thank you. Let me answer this because we're out of time. Uh, and the, the answer is we did not send... Uh, Alan Shepard to the moon. He was one of many steps. We did not send um, uh, any of the earlier Apollos directly to, Mar to, to, uh, to the moon. We, we did a series of steps that allowed us to get there safely. If we rush, it's going to be fatal, and then Mars will be radioactive, no one will, in, in effect, and no one will dare go back. So if we do it right with several missions, uh, then before we land and take that first step, then just like with Apollo, we'll do it safely and uh, successfully. And I think everyone, well, th thank you all very much.